Good morning, everybody. We're just going to give folks a few minutes to join. Not seeing too many folks coming in yet, so we can just wait a couple minutes. <clears throat> well, why don't we go ahead and get started? I apologize. I know we are getting started a few minutes late this morning. We had some technical difficulties on our end, but appreciate um, for folks who do join here with us live this morning or afternoon or evening, wherever you may be joining us from. Um, appreciate your patience. Uh, I'm excited to kick this off. My name is Nicole Shabat Weifrich. I am the Associate Dean of Student Engagement here at Bentley um, and have the privilege of working with our orientation team um, and really happy to be here this morning to speak with um, you all and learn um, from our colleagues too about um, international student experience at Bentley with our international student town hall. So thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, <clears throat> we are going to have about 15 to 20 minutes this morning of questions or excuse me of content that um, Brittany and Anna will be presenting to us um, and we will be recording this. So if at any point you'd like to revisit this session and come back um, to the website, <clears throat> in the YouTube channel for new student programs, you will be able to find that content here. Um, so we will be recording our session this morning. We will then have time for question and answer period after their presentation by using the Q&A feature in the um, Zoom. Specifically, um, since this is a webinar format, we won't be able to see you um, or invite you to ask questions live, but please feel free at any point to put in the chat or in the Q&A any questions that you might have um, for Anna and Brittany. Um, as well as for our student, Parthiv, and I'm excited to turn this over to Parthiv now to introduce himself. He is one of our student coordinators for orientation this year, uh, and we look forward to being with you all today. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, as she brilliantly said, my name is Parthiv. Um, I'm from Belgium. I'm one of the four student coordinators for the orientation program, and I'm also an international student, so looking forward to talking to you all, and I will pass it on to Anna. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anna Garson. Um, I'm the director of the Center for International Students and Scholars. Um, so welcome, everyone. I am here joined by my colleague, Brittany Mackey, um, who is the senior international student advisor in our office. Um, so welcome on behalf of the Center for International Students and Scholars. Um, we uh, have may have already been in contact with you if you're working with us in order um, to get your I-20 document. Um, to get your F-1 visa. Um, so today we're just going to go over a little bit of an introduction to uh, our office, um, a little bit about the services we provide um, and can provide you during your, your time at Bentley, as well as some a general overview of some rules and regulations you may want to know about as you prepare to come to Bentley. And then we're here um, in order to answer any, any questions you may have about um, the immigration process or adjustment to life at Bentley. So I'm going to pass it over to Brittany. Okay, so about us introducing you to some other members of our team in CISS. Um, so as Anna mentioned, our full name is the Center for International Students and Scholars. We refer to ourselves as CISS, as do um, other people around campus. So you'll get used to hearing that acronym, CISS. Um, Anna, who just spoke, is our director. 
Um, my name is Brittany Mackey. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a senior advisor in the office. Next, we have Sam Bohr, who is an advisor in the office as well, international student advisor. And last but not least, we have Teresa Lamoureux, who also goes by Terry, um, and she is our senior coordinator. She will be the first person you generally speak with when you come into our office, um, and also maybe communicate with via phone or email. We have roughly um, a thousand, about a thousand or more international um, students, both graduates and undergrads. We also support students after their studies um, on a work authorization called OPT, which is optional practical training. We may get into a little bit of that later, um, but you'll definitely have an opportunity to learn more um, in other sessions. And then once you join us at Bentley. Um, we have non-degree seeking students um, who are exchange students from various um, countries and universities with whom we partner. We have about 50 to 70 of those for the year. Um, some come for just the fall semester or just the spring semester and others stay for the entire academic year. And we are represented, our international students represent about 75 um, different countries. Great. So how can our office help you? So as I mentioned earlier, um, we you may have already been in contact with us um, for getting uh, preparing your documents to get your I-20 for your F-1 visa. Um, so accordingly, our office uh, can help with um, I-20 issuance um, and questions about acquiring your student visa to come to Bentley. We also help um, with adjusting to life in the U.S. So um, we do um, we, we are often um, the first up for some of our international students when you're getting acclimated to Bentley, um, and we are happy to refer you to any resources, whether it may be at Bentley or outside of Bentley, as you um, adapt and, and um, get everything you need sorted in order to start your studies here in the U.S. Um, during your studies, we'll continue to provide you with immigration regulation or immigration re regulation related information and travel guidance. Um, we also help um, with employment authorization. Brittany mentioned just a few minutes ago about um, that acronym OPT. Um, so international students have specific um, rules surrounding working in the United States, and we're happy to help you navigate some of those. Um, as previously mentioned, throughout your studies, resource referral, if you need anything, feel free to come to our office. Um, and in addition, we also provide some uh, programming. So we'll host events throughout the year. Some of them are educational in terms of your immigration status. Some of them are celebratory. Um, it, we welcome any and all ideas if you want to host a celebration or an event on campus um, that helps um, you know, bring awareness or just celebrate an, a, an event in your home country or a holiday. Um, we have a program called Worldview um, as well. Um, through which international students are able to serve as ambassadors and classrooms. Um, and we also serve on the committee for Culture Fest, which is an annual celebration around International Education Week that has um, events, lectures, um, uh, and uh, different, different types of programs around campus. Um, so that's what the CISS office does in a nutshell. So the next session I'm going to hand it over to Brittany for is a little bit very condensed version about visa uh, acquisition and regulations. Don't feel like you need to memorize this information now. This is just an overview as you get acclimated to the F1 visa process. Thank you. Um, so this first point, as you see, says, once you submit your financial and passport information to admissions, you will receive an electronic I-20 form, which is Bentley's recommendation for you to receive an F-1 visa. Uh, that's a fancy way of saying once you complete the VICFR is what it's called through your Bentley Connect portal. Um, admissions works with our office to make sure that they can issue your I-20, which is required for you to apply for your F-1 visa. Um, so there's another part of that um, process. The second point here you see um, is the DS-160. So I'm going to read each point just to make sure that you get all the information. So the second point is visa, um, visa issuance determined by a U.S. consulate or embassy abroad. The main visa application form is the DS-160, as I mentioned. Um, you will receive 
see further instructions with your I-20. Appointment wait times and processing times may vary by country. So you submit your VICFR to, through your Bentley Connect. Admissions works with us to make sure that you get your I-20. Um, that will be uploaded to your Bentley Connect as a new decision. You'll get an automatic email that prompts you to sign back into your Bentley Connect where you can download your I-20. Um, once you download it, please print it and sign it. There's a, there's a line that has your name on it. Um, check the information to make sure it's correct. We have all of your information, but please let us know if anything needs to be updated. Sign the I-20. Then you will use the number on your I-20, which is called your CVIS ID. Um, and CVIS is the database that the U.S. government uses to make sure that um, that stores all the information for students on F-1 visas. So you will use that information on your I-20 to then complete your DS-160. Um, that will allow you to schedule a, um, an appointment at your US, your local US consulate or embassy. Um, and then the information and that is mentioned in the second point, you'll also receive an email with a CISS welcome packet. So that has more steps on the visa process and application process. Um, you'll have to pay another fee called the CVIS fee um, that has information there for you. Um, and also just kind of some tips and things to prepare for your visa appointment. Um, as far as appointment times varying by country, you can look that up by going to the local, your local US, um, consul, US embassy or consulate's website. Their social media, particularly Facebook, is also good for um, up-to-date information about the processing times. I do encourage you to check back um, when you make an appointment, book the first appointment you can. If you're looking to make an earlier one, I just encourage you to check daily. Things happen, people, um, people decide not to apply for a visa or they get different appointments, so sometimes slots become open. The third point here says the F1 visa um, in your passport and I-20 will be used to request admission in F-1 status when you arrive at the airport or U.S. land border. You will also need to carry proof of vaccination to enter the U.S. Testing um, is lifted as of June 2022. So this month, testing is lifted. Um, you don't have to test negative for um, COVID-19 in order to enter the U.S., but once you have your appointment, you'll get more information, but you'll get a sticker that is your actual F-1 visa that will be placed in your passport. Then you will need your passport with your F-1 visa as well as your I-20 that you signed, printed and signed, to show to the border um, people at the border once you enter the U.S. So most people will be flying in, um, just have those two things available and ready. Um, the last point here says you will keep your I-20 as proof of F-1 status throughout your studies and any post-graduation work authorization like OPT that I mentioned earlier. You will need to follow F-1 rules and regulations, which is why we're here definitely to help you with that. Um, this will be your first I-20 that you'll receive from Bentley to enter the U.S., um, but do keep any I-20s that we issue you as you go along your way at Bentley. Sometimes people change majors, or when you declare your major, you'll get an updated I-20. Um, thank you for confirming Partha is, is with me. Um, and when you travel, you'll also receive a travel signature, which we'll explain once you arrive, but just make sure you keep all of the I-20s that Bentley issues you. Wonderful, thank you, Brittany. Um, so just some of the general rules and regulations once you get here. So um, Brittany already explained um, one of these acronyms um, that you'll see on the right-hand side. So um, we will refer to this often. Um, you'll see it before you, um, before you apply for your visa as well as during your studies. So CVIS stands for the Student and Exchange Visitor Information System. Your I-20 information lives here. It's a big government database um, where information lives about um, all of the international students in the US. And that database is managed by SEVP, which is the Student and Exchange Visitor Program. You'll also refer uh, hear us referring to ourselves as DSOs. Um, that uh, stands for Designated School Officials. So they're essentially any CISS advisor, anyone you interact with in the CISS, um, who is able to, who sees your CVIS record, your I-20 record, um, and can help you with any needed changes um, or advise you on your immigration status. Um, so some of the general rules you'll have to follow um, under the F-1 visa, 
Um, so you are um, you are required to study in person during COVID. Um, there were some exceptions made um, by the government um, due to schools needing to change to uh, remote operations, but um, we can confirm, especially for undergraduates, um, that you are going to be expected to study in person for the 2022-2023 academic year, and in fact, all courses will be offered in person. Um, so during your studies, you need to maintain a minimum of 12 credits. That's generally four classes per semester to maintain full-time and F1 status. Uh, you cannot work off, off campus without, gen, without uh, prior authorization. So um, generally students become eligible after one academic year for off-campus work authorization. And we do uh, have a lot of information about this on our website and post um, information sessions about CPT, which is the authorization for internships during your studies and OPT, that post-graduation work authorization um, during the semester. So if you're interested in learning more, please attend um, one of those. And if you're already overwhelmed by the number of acronyms in this presentation, do not worry. Again, all of this information will be shared with you again during orientation and is also available on our website and in many other formats. Um, one thing you should keep in mind is that you do need to complete a process with our office when you arrive um, for orientation. We will send you updated information about what that process will look like. Um, it is going to be a registration form online that you fill out. Um, but that being said, we need you to keep us updated if anything changes about your arrival plans. Um, there is a deadline for you to arrive in the US. It is by the end of the first week of classes. So um, just make sure you're keeping us updated, um, admissions, whoever um, you know, you've been in contact with so that we can make sure that we, uh, that we know about it and can help you um, navigate either deferral or um, any accommodations you may need for arriving later. Oop. All right, well, congratulations. You made it through all of that. Um, one thing I do wanna just uh, mention again, um, Anna mentioned F1 status in the previous slide, and um, she was also sharing about information in case you defer. Um, last things to remember, you know, you receive your I-20, you'll, you'll apply for your F-1 visa, your visa, you'll hear this again when we see you in person, um, we call that the key so you could enter the U.S. Um, your F-1 status, think of that as a continual line, that begins once you enter the U.S. So you can have an F-1 visa and still not come if you don't you know, if you don't come this semester for some reason and you have an F-1 visa, that's fine, but your F-1 status begins when you enter the U.S. with your F-1 visa and your I-20, um, and that is when um, some of the regulations that we shared will make more sense. Um, so lastly, contacting us at CISS. Our website, as Anna mentioned, has a lot of information, um, and we also have recordings of other um, workshops we've done. So if you're curious about OPT or CPT, those um, there are recordings on our website about that. There is a special section for new students. So please um, go ahead and look around there. Our email is the best way to contact us. It is ga underscore CISS at bentley.edu. Um, all of the advisors have access to that email. So we share it and we parse out um, different emails to make sure that we can get back to people um, in as quickly a manner as possible. Um, our phone numbers, you can also reach us. Um, you know, if you're calling from abroad, add a plus before the one and or zero zero before the one and um, the number is 781. 891-2829. That is also our main number that we share. So again, you could speak with any of the advisors when you call us. And we have Zoom advising hours during the summertime, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, anytime that you receive an email from somebody in CISS, the Zoom link is in our signature. Um, but if you do not have access to that, email us and we're happy to send you the link. Um, and then our summer office hours are Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Wonderful. So I think this brings us to uh, the Q&A portion of our presentation. 
Great, and I thought it might be wonderful to um, offer some time too for Parthiv to jump in and maybe share some student experience um, and perspective from his experience as an international student as well. So Parthiv, do you have some thoughts or um, advice to share on how to navigate the great information that Anna and Brittany shared with us this morning? Sure, yeah, I think the first thing to like keep in mind when you're coming in, so I came in during a very stressful, like a, a more stressful time, I would say, because I came in during COVID, I guess. So I had a lot more to manage. I came in by myself. However, I think even if you are coming by yourself, I think it's just important to, when you get to campus or when you're experiencing um, the orientation program or whatever it is for you when you're coming in, just to take a deep breath, like everyone's in the same boat. You have plenty of people coming in together and experiencing the same thing as you. So that's like not to worry at all. And then in terms of your visa and everything, I think for me, I've never ever had an issue in terms of anything. Uh, the CISS department has been really helpful for me and we've communicated quite a lot throughout my two years so far. And anytime I've had like a change in my F1, if I've, well, I've changed my major twice now. So whenever I had a change or anything, it's been quite fluid and smooth. So nothing to worry about in terms of that. So if you have any questions or anything about your, um, F1 status or anything, it's really easy to contact the CISS department. But that's it for that's it for now, I think. Great. Thank you so much, Parthiv. Uh, <clears throat> one question that I think is is we have today, but then also is probably on a lot of people's minds is there's it seems like there's a lot of instability with travel um, right now. And so is there any flexibility with arrival dates? Um, and then again, kind of maybe expounding a little bit on kind of what that first programming and welcome is like for our international student community um, upon getting there to orientation. Yeah, so I would say in terms of travel, um, as, as you saw on a previous slide, um, there are some limitations about when you can arrive. So generally, um, the deadline to arrive in the U.S. is by the end of um, ad, the ad drop period, which is after the first week of classes. Um, so you really, really, really need to be in contact with us um, if there's anything that happens, whether it's travel wise or um, getting your visa um, that would change that because we need to make sure that we advise you on the steps that you need to follow. Um, hopefully with the testing requirement lifted, um, there will be less once you actually receive your F1 visa. There will be less um, less delays in getting to the U.S. Um, that being said, we still do understand that there are um, added factors still due to to COVID and um, just in general visa acquisition um, still occurring. Um, so we would recommend if you're having issues specifically with getting your visa, maybe it goes into administrative processing. Um, please contact us so that we can help connect you to some congressional resources, some other resources, tips um, in order to get updates on your the status of your visa. Um, so that way we can maybe um, help handle it before it gets to the, the very last minute and, and you're um, still waiting for your visa. But again, um, there, there are limitations, unfortunately, to, to some of the flexibility we can offer. We just ask that you please, please keep in communication with us. Um, your specific situation may be different from others. So um, keep in contact with us and we're happy to help you um, help you navigate that. Brittany, do you have anything to add? Um, I'll just take the other part of the question, which was about, uh, you know, kind of the first steps or the first things that you'll experience when you arrive, at least from the CISS perspective. Um, we um, collaborate with orientation, so you'll have a special time to come and meet with us. As Anna mentioned, you will need to um, complete a form, which I'm we're happy to say is digital now. Um, so, you know, being very mindful, being trying to be sustainable and get it to people as easily and quickly as possible. Um, so just be um, on the lookout for that in your email. There are very detailed instructions to it. But again, if you have questions, feel free to contact us. Once you complete that, that is for us to make sure that we can tell CVIS um, and the US government that you, you have arrived safely. Yes, you have your 
F1 visa, you know, they can see that you've entered the US and now we can say, yes, the student is actually at Bentley and, you know, they're settling and going to begin their studies with us. Um, outside of that, we do have um, some programming. So we will introduce you to more members of our office. Um, we'll go into a little bit more detail about different regulations. Um, and as Anna mentioned, you know, it might be a little bit a lot of information, but it's really just an overview so that you have an idea of what to come back to CISS if you have specific questions. Um, we'll also hopefully connect you with some um, some more current international students on studying on F1 visas, and we'll have another um, time period for Q and A. And um, you know, we like to give out some gifts. Sometimes we call it swag. So hopefully, you'll get some things that um, have CISS and the logo on it to, you know, sport while you're around campus. And I'll just add from the perspective of orientation, <clears throat> we will be running um, trips to Target um, during those, those early days of orientation after your arrival. So we recognize with long distance travel, the limitations of what you can bring with you. Uh, so we do try to provide ample opportunity for you to get to stores, um, be able to have us provide transportation for those opportunities so that you can pick up anything that you might not have been able to bring with you. Um, the orientation program is structured in small groups, so you will be connected with a group of students, of other first year students, some international students, some domestic students to, from the US, um, and that will be led by an orientation leader, and that orientation leader will really be um, your great student connection and student leader and mentor to also be there, <clears throat> excuse me, as a resource for you throughout the orientation program. So there are certainly opportunities where you will have the great access to CISS and really be with your international student community. And then also the orientation program is really built to maximize your opportunities to meet other first year students and really get connected community wide. Uh, but we also are committed to making sure that you have the resources that you need to navigate the area, knowing that it's all gonna be very new and different. Um, and so anyone in the orientation staff is certainly available to help um, as well. Partha, is there anything else in terms of the orientation program itself that you'd like to offer um, any insight on? Um, just one more thing to add. I think um, the last thing I'd just like to say is as an exchange student, if you are an exchange student coming in, um, the process is a little, well, the orientation process is a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same overall. Um, every international student has their like own like we all come from different places so in terms of the orientation program it's a very like fluid smooth process you get to you get to meet everyone and in the end it pretty much works the same way so that's it thank you um well it's very clear that Brittany and anna got all the information that <laughs> needed here. We don't have any other questions that have come in, um, but I would just love to reinforce um, for everybody the importance of communication. Um, we are here all summer to help support your needs, to answer your questions. Um, if there are things that pop up as questions following today's um, webinar that you weren't able to ask, by all means, um, you can reach out to the contact information in the presentation to CISS. The um, orientation email address and orientation contact information is always available to you as well. And we will be hosting additional um, town halls and Falcon Live chats throughout the summer um, on different content areas. So by all means, feel free to join those as well and learn a little bit more about other aspects of the student experience. Um, but Anna and Brittany, anything else you'd like to share before we wrap up this morning? Just welcome to Bentley and we look forward to meeting you in person during orientation week. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for joining us this morning, and we look forward to seeing you when you get here in September. Thank you so much.